Welcome to the Flag Bearer Channel. This is Little Known Black History Facts. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Photographer of the Times or Heretic The Story of Photographer and FBI Informant Ernest Withers. Some of the most enduring and iconic photographs of the Civil Rights Movement were taken by Ernest Withers. Withers was a native of Memphis, Tennessee. Working at a time when mainstream American publications rarely hired black photographers, Ernest Withers made a way. Withers became one of the first nine black police officers to join the Memphis police force in 1948 after serving in World War II. Although Withers was given a police uniform, a patrol car and gun, he was forbidden to patrol white communities or arrest white folks. His power was relegated strictly within the confines of black Memphis during the height of segregation. Off duty, Withers photographed the same community, documenting the Bill Street music scene, the birthplace of Memphis blues. After getting caught selling liquor illegally, Withers was fired from the police force. He went on to work as a freelance photographer taking photographs for a local black newspaper in Memphis and for Ebony and Jet magazines, while also working as Stax Records' official photographer. Ernest Withers is probably best known for his civil rights work. He photographed basically every major campaign across the South. He was present when James Meredith was integrating Old Miss. He was in the room when two men were being charged with the murder of Emmett Till. He's there when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is riding the first desegregated bus. Withers was just kind of everywhere, and who was someone everyone trusted. And he was someone who, especially the civil rights leaders, knew and respected and believed would tell the story accurately and would document what was actually happening. After meeting Mississippi activist Medgar Evers, Withers began following and photographing the civil rights movement. He first photographed Dr. Martin Luther King in Montgomery, Alabama in 1956 as King boarded one of the first integrated buses. Withers earned the trust of Martin Luther King and many other civil rights leaders, but as it turns out, he was secretly taking photographs for the federal government as well. Withers' business cards bore the slogan, Pictures Tell the Story a philosophy that he used over the course of six decades to create more than one million images. But it wasn't until years after his death that the bombshell dropped. Documents revealed Withers worked as a paid FBI informant. During the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, the Bureau recruited thousands of informants as part of a covert program originally created to monitor communists in America, but ended up targeting the civil rights movement as well as other individuals and groups. In 2010, under the Freedom of Information Act, the FBI released documents indicating that Withers began working as an informant shortly after making his first photograph of Dr. King in 1956, a revelation that was said to be both shocking but not surprising. Withers had first been investigated by the FBI in 1946 for having suspected communist ties. For years, he captured critical moments in black American history. Withers supplied the photographs he took of the civil rights movement to the very organization set on dismantling it. The FBI at that time had no black agents and they couldn't just show up at a civil rights meeting. The FBI did not have the best workforce if the thing you were trying to do was infiltrate a black civil rights movement that's emerging primarily in urban centers across the country. And so the FBI's recruited assets became vitally important for the FBI. People who could be in the room, who knew everyone's name, who would introduce themselves, who could ask for someone's address and not be suspicious. Ernest Withers was ideal to be used as a sponge of information. He was a local photographer, he knew everybody and their families, and he knew where they lived, where the meetings were held. So Ernest had a lot of that information, but now the FBI was able to prime him for it, and it asked for questions. A lot of what Ernest did was he sold them photographs, photographs that he might have taken and otherwise sold to the Associated Press or to a black newspaper. 
He'd shoot a protest all day, he'd get all the caption information, and then he'd sell the roll of film to the FBI. J. Edgar Hoover used the information that Withers provided in hopes to aid him in his obsessive quest to prevent the rise of a black messiah. Some feel that Mr. Withers didn't have a choice because when the federal government comes and says we want information that only you can provide, did he really have a choice? Starting in the early 1960s, Withers had spent nearly two decades as a paid informant of the FBI, feeding its agents information about the activists he photographed. He not only informed, he took requests. At one anti-Vietnam War march, he was asked to photograph all of the protesters, taking special care to catch all their faces, and he turned the prints over to his FBI contact. On occasion, he would sell his work to a local newspaper, then give copies to the Bureau. His career as an informant ended after Withers was swept into an FBI investigation of corrupt Tennessee Governor Ray Blanton. Withers was caught on tape, orchestrating a cash for clemency plan to free a young black man who faced a long prison sentence for a first-time offense. Ernest Withers took to the grave the secret that he was an informant for the FBI. While some believe Withers betrayed the cause of civil rights, others are more than forgiving. They say his actions were part of a larger narrative about the U.S. government's unchecked power to spy on its own citizens and extinguish ideas and movements that it felt were a threat. Some say that Ernest Withers was a man with a hustler mentality, that he had a wife and eight children to feed. He was paid, but that Mr. Withers was doing what he needed to do in order to feed his family. What's your opinion? Was Withers a friend or foe to the civil rights community? Until next time, if you like little known history facts as I do, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Press the bell to be notified of future uploads. Thank you for watching.